Hello everybody, this is Borak Kinier, co-founder and CEO at EuroCloud. Now we will be looking back on the last six years of high performance containers. Um, if you couldn't remember where you were back in 2014, um, let me help you a little bit. That was the year, the ALS Ice Bucket Challenge, where 17 million videos were uploaded to Facebook with people pouring buckets of ice water all over their heads. It was also the year in technology news where Apple picked up Beats, Google acquired Nest, and Facebook picked up Oculus. And just as significantly as you know, these social and technology events, the high performance container ecosystem was seeded. So let's see where we were as a community back in 2014. When the whole um, container ecosystem got started, it was about, hey, you know, we, we are now able to do virtualization without hypervisors. A lot of people thought uh, it was quite nice to be able to run without a hypervisor, and that's what the containers were taught to be, just another type of virtualization. Um, my first introduction to um, the, the container ecosystem, the way it exists today, was actually at Twitter's uh, headquarters in San Francisco. They, the hyperscalers, they loved running containers. It really solved a huge problem for them. They were able to organize their DevOps pipelines and separation of concerns was, was the number one thing they were uh, in love with. Um, they could have their developers develop, they could have their ops team run servers, and the two could interface through containers. That's, um, that's how we got here. Back in 2013, Docker open sourced um, by .cloud became the darling of the technology ecosystem. And guess what it said on the cover? It said, do not use this in production. Um, just as any good IT people would do, we all just dumped it into production and started running it there. Um, the whole uh, Docker phenomena became so popular that the company that introduced it, DotCloud, actually renamed the company after it, um, and they got into the business of, um, you know, selling container orchestration. Um, in 2013, UberCloud was um, already working on an HPC container roadmap, and we too fell in love with Docker. Um, and I could say that in October 2014. That was when um, we reached the end of the beginning. Uh, Docker version 1.0 was announced and um, the whole container ecosystem was on a firm footing at that point. Um, we could look at 2015 to 2017 as the period where um, containers really started being noticed uh, by the HPC community. Uh, we saw multiple projects out of um, the government labs, um, especially a few of them in California, became um, the, uh, the forefront of containers. Uh, Singularity was announced at Lawrence Livermore, and um, Shifter was announced at NERSC. Um, both of them brilliant, brilliant projects. They, um, they looked at if we were to do uh, high-performance computing inside of containers, what would our container ecosystem look like? And um, very successful projects. Um, Singularity still continues to be um, a popular runtime and um, Shifter is um, still in production and um, you will hear about uh, both of these projects. Uh, Kubernetes was becoming more and more of an orchestration uh, system that's on the rise. Uh, we did not quite see it during this period, 2015 to 2017, but you know more and more it's being it's being talked about. Um, this these two years, 2015 through 17, was when job schedulers, the traditional HPC job schedulers, when they started supporting containers, uh, they obviously had various levels of success and various levels of support. Um, however, um, there was support nevertheless. Um, we also see that during this period, um, UberCloud was running Docker containers for high-performance computing. 
um, at that point, we already were multi-node. Um, we understood the performance characteristics well, and commercial codes were already uh, being containerized successfully. Um, we, we saw during this time that there were also um, a few forerunners who, um, who reached um, success with containers. They, they were able to run it in production systems with um, high-performance computing applications um, running inside of them. Um, as the um, community became more and more interested in high-performance computing and containers, we saw that the uh, HPC workshop, which, which is the workshop we're part of right now, um, got to a point where we couldn't fit into the meeting rooms at uh, Frankfurt ISC. Um, literally, uh, we saw that there was um, you know, standing room only at the, um, at the event. Um, we, we couldn't fit everybody in. Uh, so um, in the past few years, um, we already see that containers are mainstream. There is uh, solid support by Linux distros. Um, you know, pick the, uh, pick the favorite distro of your choice and you can get um, solid container support. Um, th this really helps with the uh, further popularization of containers. Uh, we also see that containers are now widely used for high performance computing. Um, Singularity Shifter, Docker success stories are all out. Um, we still don't quite see in the last couple of years that Kubernetes got uh, to a level of um, success at high performance computing. But again, um, we, we noticed that there was more and more talk about it. Um, in terms of the orchestration, um, we see that there's uh, wide, wider and wider support. Uh, a lot of the HPC schedulers now support containers as first-level citizens. Many of them reached, you know, second, third uh, generations of their container support. And uh, there are ways that you can run uh, containers with MPI support within uh, some of the schedulers already, which is which is fantastic news. Um, we're also seeing that advanced topics are now very well understood. Um, in the earlier days of containers for high performance computing, we, we continuously struggled with uh, things like GPUs and InfiniBand, all these um, OS bypass type devices, um, and being able to, being able to get, um, get them even recognized was a challenge. Um, that's not the case anymore. Um, we also have um, you know, vast documentation in terms of the uh, shortcomings of containers when it comes to high-performance computing. Uh, the, uh, the the forum that you're part of here is one of those mechanisms, um, how we document these shortcomings. And um, we also have a pretty clear roadmap in terms of how we want to use containers, what they are useful for in the high-performance computer computing setup and um, how we can get more out of containers. Um, another interesting point is we saw that in 2019 uh, cloud spending reached an all-time high of four billion dollars. Uh, this, this is HPC specific cloud spending. Um, do we see that uh, based on the um, assumptions, the uh, estimates made for the year, they were around $3 billion, uh, which was wrong by a billion dollars. That's a significant number. Uh, the growth rate hit a 60% um, year-over-year growth mark, uh, which is quite significant. So the reason I mention all of this is because um, as HPC Cloud grows, uh, we see that the demand for containers also increases because containers happen to be a very good way to move code around. Um, and many high-performance computing setups related to cloud happen to be hybrid deployments. There's some on-premise with uh, some uh, public or private cloud deployments kind of being merged together. And in those cases, uh, being able to move the code around using containers becomes um, a very strong asset. Um, we, when we look at containers in 2020, 
we see that the HPC community totally embraced containers. Um, the, the benefits have been fully documented. We have best practices. And as a community, we're also able to provide direction back to the container community. And that's um, achieved by conversations through you know, this forum that you're part of, plus you know, getting the feedback back to the Open Container Initiative in various ways. Um, and also there are a number of uh, technology vendors uh, in the room. And again, the, the voice of this community is being heard by, uh, by those providers through the representatives right here in this forum. So uh, it's great that we've all come together. Um, we, we have a fairly good understanding of the, uh, the gaps. Um, we, um, we often, um, even outside of this annual uh, workshop, we often get together. If you want to take a part and make sure that your special case is also heard, um, please reach out to any one of us um, as presenters today and we will be able to um, uh, get you hooked up into this group. Uh, in terms of um, the speed of adoption, we've seen differences between the academic world versus the um, non-academic uh, industry. Um, we've seen that um, there was a very strong uptick in terms of the academic workloads getting towards uh, containers. That was great. Um, there's been a lot of projects um, that um, that basically got streamlined out of that. And now uh, we're also seeing that non-academic customers are getting up to speed. Every large cloud provider, you know, Google Cloud, AWS, Azure, even VMware, they are all promoting containers and um, they see this as a acceleration of how to uh, get their customers uh, to their clouds and to their technology offerings around cloud. Um, we see that um, at HPC centers, at public and private clouds, uh, there are containers being deployed successfully for uh, various HPC workloads. I wanted to pull one of those um, examples into the uh, spotlight today. Um, a company called FL Smith, um, which is a Danish company. It's, um, uh, it's been founded in 1882. Um, uh, with more than 10,000 employees today. Um, they, they work on um, products that are used in cement mining um, type industries. Um, that picture you see on the right is, um, is, the, is the simulation results of a, of a blower. Um, what they're doing there is a, uh, th that device actually fits on the back of a 18-wheeler truck. So it, it's, a, it's a significant size equipment and it's used for um, having a very efficient flame so that um, and, and that flame can be used in generating heat which then uh, in turn can be used for drying uh, and evaporating fluids out of um, materials. So um, this JetFlex burner um, is being designed now on a public cloud. Um, FL Smith has moved um, uh, the simulation runs uh, to a public cloud. It's running at 512 cores. It's not necessarily a supercomputer scale, but it's um, significant enough for, uh, for this use case. Um, the entire workload is running inside of containers. Um, that includes the graphical user interface. Um, that's where that uh, screenshot was taken. Um, so the pre-processing of the uh, CAD design is is done inside of a um, inside of a container, which is remotely accessed. Uh, then the simulation takes place on 512 cores, all running in um, con containers. And it's it's a it's a commercial code. Um, that's running inside, and once the simulation results are completed, um, they, the post-processing also takes place in the cloud. Um, what's also interesting is that the entire environment runs without a job scheduler. There's there's no queuing mechanism. As soon as the engineer wants to run a uh, simulation, 
um, new instances are generated on the public cloud, the simulation is run, and then all the instances are uh, torn back down, and containers make all of this very scalable and easy to manage. That is just one use case I picked out of very many, um, and it's great to see that uh, through all the work that this community has uh, gone through, um, now these are uh, possible. I expect that going forward, um, containerization of uh, commercial and open source codes will further accelerate, um, and the, the challenges around um, the orchestration and integration into high-performance computing systems will be uh, further resolved. And uh, with that, we will be able to get um, hybrid cloud deployments, whether uh, tasks are running on-premise, whether they are running on a public or private cloud, we will be able to achieve uh, efficiencies in terms of uh, moving the applications around, uh, creating repeatability in the, uh, in the workloads. So uh, that's where we are today, and um, I hope this um, history will be useful for you to see where the container ecosystem is going so that you can um, make better decisions in terms of how to use containers in your own high-performance computing environments. Uh, thank you for attending.